Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about a recent acquisition, which is a pair of B2 ankle boots. Now, I'm not going to bring these up to the camera here and everything and talk about them. I'm going to leave all of that for looking at them in more detail. Okay, so something posted about on social media a little while ago, which has stirred a lot of interest, is these reproduction B2 boots, which I recently received. I purchased them a little while ago. They came direct from Pakistan, so they took a little bit of time to arrive, and they are at quite an interesting reproduction. That is to say that B2s are not widely reproduced. In fact, for a long time, there's not been anyone reproducing them. I believe there's a company in, in Belgium who you can still buy uh, certain sizes of these from, or reproductions of them rather, and they're quite a useful thing to have because they are an early Great War boot. The B2, if I remember correctly, was first patented in 1913 and would continue production through the war. The B5, which is a lot more readily available, was not patented until May of 1915, if I remember my dates correctly, and therefore is less useful in a way, I suppose, but it's the one that's still produced. Uh, Lennons, of course, have the original, um, the original uh, patents and so forth for them, and they make an excellent reproduction, which has a price tag to match, but if you are focusing on Great War reenacting, I definitely think you can you can justify the expense. Soldier of Fortune, of course, make a much cheaper variant, which I will admit is the ones I have, because I sort of spread myself a bit thin in terms of time periods covered. But they've served me okay, they've not fallen apart yet. Uh, they've had a new set of heels and new studs in them once, and they, they've kept going, so I'm fairly happy with them for the, the price paid. In terms of quality, I would say that these are similar to the Soldier of Fortune B5s. Um, they come from a company called iSuttler, who sell on eBay. They make brogans for civil American Civil War reenactors. Uh, they do make B5s as well, which obviously I have not inspected closely, but they do make B5s. Uh, they make all sorts of different sort of high leg cavalry boots and so forth as well. But these caught my eye. And they basically, what arrived, matched up nicely to the photos in the listing. So I didn't go into it completely blind. I was concerned that they would arrive looking nothing like. But they arrived looking like this, and I'm fairly pleased with the result. The B2 is quite a distinctive boot, uh, also known as the galosh pattern. Uh, it has this seam here, which then reverses at the front here. And that piece of reinforcement, of course, is where the rivet would appear on the B5 later on. Uh, this, I forget the nomenclature for the, the two parts of the boot, but it's a very distinctive feature, this. It's very visually distinct and makes the B2 very recognisable. From photographs I've seen of these, this seems to be a fairly decent reproduction of the shape. Um, but I will leave that for you to judge if I give you a good look at these here. You can also get an idea of the quality. As I say, the, the stitching and everything is not too bad. I would say these are on a par with Soldier of Fortune's B5s, which are something I've had for a while and I was I was happy to purchase for what I was going to use them for. Look at the sole here is probably where they're let down most. The studs are too small and, and obviously I knew there was going to be work needed on the sole. The heel plate, if we can get this in focus here, if it'll focus, there we go, is paper thin and already wearing down. I have worn these for a couple of two mile walks. They nipped my right heel uh, when first worn but have been fine since then with uh, two pairs of socks, thin pair and a thin pair of thin synthetics and a thick pair of wool over the top. They've worked very well from there. The toe plate leaves much to be desired, obviously. I knew there would be work needed on the, on the sole, given the photographs in the listing. That's fine. I bought these in a size 11. Uh, I take an 11 or a 10, depending on the, the boots or shoes, manuf you know, the manufacturer and so forth. And I thought, a, I don't know if they're using US or UK sizing in the listings, uh, and I, I didn't get a clarification on that point. I thought if I order one size up and they're too big, I can easily put a thick pair of socks on, so I'd rather go one size up. And I went to an 11, and these fit perfectly within a size 11. So for what that's worth, that piece of advice. These aren't as they came to me. These have had a coat of dubbing, which has dulled down all the sort of raw edges of the seams and everything here quite nicely, which obviously is, is something that, that would you would do if you purchased these. These have been made in smooth leather. Now, the B2s, as I understand it, from, from reading on the Great War Forum, which I highly recommend people have a look at, I'll put a link to one of the boot threads uh, down below, as, along with the link to where you can purchase these on eBay. I have read that these were manufactured in various different leathers, and certainly existing examples in people's collections are made in various different leathers, smooth out, rough out. Pebble grain even have turned up. So, it's varied, and I, I went for smooth leather in this instance. You can also purchase these in rough out leather uh, with the rough side out. They do also manufacture them that way. You just have to specify 
and as I say, that's an option you can pick there. I have been pleasantly surprised uh, by by these. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect in the post, but I thought I'd take a punt, and if they were good, I'd be able to recommend them, which is obviously what I'm doing here. It's your decision based upon what you've seen here. I will also just quickly show you a photograph of these worn with putties uh, and trousers, just to give you an idea of how they look uh, when worn with a bit more of the uniform. Here you can see the boots worn with putties, and I think they look pretty good. I'm fairly happy with how these look here and obviously it's for you to judge uh, but I'm just trying to give you the best look at these that I can and, and give you the opportunity to make the best decision that you can regarding them should you wish to purchase them. So as I say with this I am I personally am satisfied with what's arrived and I think the shape and everything is is not too bad uh, I think they're they're decent as I say one of the biggest problem with these is that there has not been no, no one has been reproducing these for a long time I, I think there is a company in Belgium who made them with a very big chunky square toe uh, which was not quite the right shape from my to my eye looking at photographs of, of originals um, I think they only have a limited run left of, of one or two sizes so these are a good option they will obviously make them to your size and they're readily available uh, and I think as these go uh, the proof will really be in wearing them more and I do plan to wear these for another uh, bimble around the Derwent Reservoir uh, Derwent Reservoir is a little bit later in the year uh, I will report back on that as well that will be the proof of whether these are actually decent or not really uh, but for the moment they've they've done well and the walks I've been in been on wearing them they are uh, they're perfectly fine and in terms of quality and stuff I'm, I'm really quite happy with them uh, for for you know what they are and where they came from and you know, other items manufactured that come out of, of Pakistan, you know, Soldier Fortune's own B5s, I think, are made over there and so forth. The quality holds up to that sort of, you know, the standard I've, I've seen from that. So uh, I'm fairly pleased, as I say, and hopefully having a look at these in detail in the video has given you, you know, enough uh, information and enough visual uh, inspection of these to decide whether or not they'd uh, be useful for you. But they are certainly a, a very good thing to have if you're doing early Great War reenacting. These fit the bill perfectly as opposed to the b5s which came a little bit later there we are i do hope you found that interesting uh, obviously looking at these in more detail hopefully you'll be able to make your own decision as to whether they're suitable for your purposes whether you like the look of them the quality and so forth i've been pleasantly surprised so far in that i was expecting something of perhaps lesser quality uh, they aren't perfect by any means and as i say the construction is roughly along the lines of soldier of fortunes for their b5s but the proof will be in the longer wearing of them and obviously, as I say, the plan to, to do a march in them and see how they hold up to that. So some of you may wish to wait and see how I get on uh, in that scenario, see how they hold up to a little bit more punishment uh, than they've been put through already, but we shall see. But I do hope you found that interesting, as I always say. Um, if you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you're newly subscribing or you've already subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below, which will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's a Patreon and a PayPal link down below as well. And of course, if you want to follow the channel on social media, there are links to Twitter, Facebook and Instagram all down below in the description as well. In addition, if you want to make contact but you don't really use social media, there's also an email address down below as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, so until next time, bye for now.